make the decision to get your child a cell phone. Now what? Of course, phones can be great. They can help kids stay organized and up to date on everything, stay in touch with mom and dad, but being so connected can also pose potential problems. So this week, we're sharing advice to help parents manage technology in a positive way. Deseret News columnist Amy Iverson is here to share seven rules every parent should set if they decide to give their kids a phone. Kind of a back to basics conversation yeah. today. I want to ask your opinion, though. There's a hot debate happening right now on Instagram and Facebook. Should we even allow children to have smartphones? This could be a whole conversation for a yeah. whole other day, but what's your take on it? Well, it's been the law that I talked to you about for a long time that 13 is the age where we're seeing kids a lot younger than that on all social media. I personally don't friend kids who are under that age just because of legalities, but um, I think it is up to every parent to decide for themselves. There is no no hard and fast age when a kid's ready for a cell phone. You have to know the maturity of your kid and when you're ready to take some action too because it's work for parents. Sure. I was going to say as I was reading over your notes for today's <laughs> conversation, we're potty training right now yeah. and it was, oh. as much, it was as much about me being ready as it was her. In fact, more I've decided about me yes. being ready and that's the case with handing over something like a smell smartphone. I love that I just compared it to my <laughs> three-year-old's life. But really, you as a parent have to be ready to take part in that decision as well. Yeah, I consider it a full-time job. It is, well, at least a part-time job, a contract job. You are definitely working if you're going to give your kid a cell phone to keep them safe. Rule number one, you want parents out there to set tech-free times. Well, I mean, we know that cell phone addiction is a real thing, and I think that's one of parents' biggest uh, nerve things they're nervous about. All you see is them staring at your phone. So you have to start early with setting, yeah, times when they're not allowed to be on their phone. Um, so maybe that's two hours after school. Maybe it's an hour after school. And then set that hard and fast rule the minute they get their cell phone that you plug your phone in, at my bedside, that's what I do, you decide where, every night at 8.30 or whatever it is, I think you have to set times where kids know they can be without their phone so that they know they can be without their You're phone. You're teaching them the control yeah. and the discipline that will be They don't have later. it. <laughs> yeah, we don't have it no. some of the time. So those rules are good for us as well. And is this a verbal time commitment or are you actually programming their phone to shut down? You can program their phone. I like to make them have that option so that they are following kind of the guidelines that you set. If you do it all for them, they don't ever learn. Yeah, yeah. Tech-free times, also you recommend tech-free zones. Yes, so make uh, make a rule in your house. Maybe for us it's, you know, the dinner table, definitely no screens. Um, maybe it's in the car when you're driving because that's a good time to talk. I kind of think that's a big yeah. one, actually. I read an article by writer Brooke Romney, who also called in for the Deseret News. She talked about how her husband had asked her to put away her phone <laughs> in the car. Yeah. Because that's a time when it's easy to zone out, but it also is a time that holds potential for great, rich family conversations and even just free space, right? It's free one of space. the few times I would always always volunteer to carpool because it's one of the few times that you can listen in on kids conversations and when they'll actually talk to you. So, so maybe a way during the car mm -hmm. time as well. Do you ask for your kids passwords Amy? I do. Uh, I think that you have to have their passwords and this is a good thing to start right at the beginning too. If you didn't it's never too late but you have to explain to them hey this is for your safety. You would never take your 13 year old to New York and just drop them off and be like hey that that's what it's like when you give them a cell phone. You're giving them the world. And so for you to have their passwords is a way for you to check what other kids are sending them and checking what your kids are doing and just being more involved in their world. And with those passwords, are you peeking in regularly on messages and emails? I do. And yeah. I think that you need to be honest with your kids. Don't make it a sneaky thing, but just say, hey, I'm gonna do spot checks every once in a while. And it's not that every night you're going through every text, mm -hmm, unless mm -hmm. you're at that point where you have to. Sometimes that gets to that point. But I think early on, just letting them know that it Anytime you might just pop on and see what they're doing. And it's not so much privacy as it is safety. I mean, you are just helping to monitor and teach them how to use this tool in their lives. Yeah, and maybe they have a, like a journal or something on there that no, you're not going to go snooping in. But for their social media, this stuff is public. Yeah. So I think it is good for parents to be able to see what their kids are doing. You like uh, their location tracking to be on. Yes. Now, I, I've said for certain things off. So they don't need to be telling the whole world where they are every time they post a photo to Instagram. But for you and for parents, to use so for for iPhone it's it's so easy to use family sharing and for Android they have lots of apps that do this too so that you just know where they are mm -hmm. and you can tell them hey this is so I'm not texting you every five <laughs> seconds <laughs> saying did you help make it you. Yeah. are you on your way home um, it's just a great way for safety for you to know where they are if they made it to their friends okay especially younger kids and it makes sense for a lot of parents they say the purpose of giving their child a cell phone in the first place is to keep that connection yes this is an obvious one yeah. I think um, you ask your kids well you require your kids to ask you before they download anything 
Yes, and f at first this was because you didn't have a way to stop them from buying in-app purchases and things. <laughs> right, from buying all those now coins. Now they've kind of fixed that. <laughs> but it's just a good way because you have no idea what these apps are yeah. for the most part. And yeah. there's new ones every week. So it's super easy on Android and iPhone. The Google Play Store has it. Um, Family Sharing has it on iPhone where it's just called Ask to Buy. And you just turn that on on your kids' phones. Then anytime they want an app, you just get a little ping on your phone. Hey, so-and-so wants to buy this app or download it for free. Mm -hmm. You have have five seconds to go in, kind of check it out, see if you want to look at the privacy and the age rating is really important to let them know if they can get yeah, it. Yeah, it kind not. of forces your hand to do your research mm -hmm. and know what's out there as well. And I joked about, you know, parents needing these lessons of discipline and control as much as anybody. You see, ultimately, that's one of the biggest guidelines out there is to practice what you preach. Yeah, I think um, we talked a while ago about this study where they asked kids, hey, if you could make rules for your parents, what would they be? And it was sad when you saw the answers because they were be present. Yeah. My parents always looking at their phone and have other hobbies outside of technology. Ugh. These are the things we're trying to teach our kids. So if we can mentor that behavior, then our kids will do just fine. Good basics, good ground rules, Thanks. good guidelines. Thank you. What's coming up in your column this week? So I'm going to break all this down with specifics on where you need to go in settings to make them happen. That's at DesertNews.com slash Amy. Awesome. Amy, thank you. Thanks, Brooke.